the last couple of videos we have introduced gas laws and the ideal gas equation of state and deviations from ideality that happen in real gases. In this video we're going to learn a way to treat uh, real gases, those that deviate from ideality, with the concept of a virial equation of state. Okay, so if we take an ideal gas, we know that there's an equation of state that relates the variables that define the physical state. And that equation of state is uh, this one, which is quite popular. We can also write it in molar form, uh, where we just simply use the molar volume to obtain this. Now, it turns out that this uh, ideal gas equation of state is uh, quite useful uh, under uh, low pressure conditions and ambient uh, temperature. Uh, in fact, at ambient pressure, uh, it turns out that many gases behave ideally, so, so this is actually something that you can use quite well to determine relationships between the variables uh, of the physical state. However, uh, generally when you elevate the pressure, it turns out that gases do not behave according to that equation anymore. And a way that we have to uh, um, determine uh, how real gases that deviate from ideality is by using something that we call the compression factor. Okay, and the compression factor is simply uh, the ratio of uh, pressure uh, times the molar volume uh, divided over RT. Right, so if we uh, are able to plot here a graph of how the compression factor changes with pressure, okay, uh, notice that from the ideal gas equation of state, this number should always be one. Okay, so we uh, can put this number here, one, and that is the uh, behavior that we'd expect if the gas is ideal. But in reality, what we actually tend to observe is variations from this straight line with zero slope. Uh, we will sometimes observe uh, this type of behavior, uh, generally at lower temperatures, and sometimes we observe this type of behavior uh, for other gases, or perhaps for the same gas as this line at a different temperature. Clearly, uh, gases do not behave ideally unless the pressure is quite low, close to ambient pressure or lower. If you go to higher pressures, then uh, the ideal gas equation of state is not satisfied. So the question is, well, what do we do? How do we uh, come up with a new equation of state that is able to capture uh, that deviation from ideality that many real gases experience? Okay, a way that this is uh, uh, done uh, with a virial concept is to simply consider that uh, uh, this C value, which we expect to be one, okay, that that's simply the lower order term in an expansion uh, that is done on the variable that breaks down the model. Okay, so clearly we see here that um, pressure, right, is the, the variable that breaks down the model. If you have low pressures, the ideal model works really well, but if you start to increase the pressures, then deviations from ideality uh, start to appear. Okay, so the, then the, uh, the, the idea here is that you can uh, try to expand this uh, compression factor into terms that depend uh, on increasing powers of the variable that breaks on the model, right? So the variable that breaks on the model is uh, the pressure. Okay, so you simply uh, come up with an expression uh, that depends on increasing powers of that variable. Like uh, this is a constant B prime multiplying P plus C prime multiplying P squared plus another constant D prime P cubed. And you can do this uh, uh, all the way until infinity if you want to. This is an expansion, right? So if the gas behaves ideally, it turns out that these B prime, C prime, D prime constants, all those are zero and you recover the ideal model Z is equal to one. But if uh, the gas does not behave ideally, then uh, these uh, values, these uh, 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 constants there, they're going to uh, provide an idea for how far away from ideality you are and so forth, okay? So uh, with this uh, virial uh, expansion, we can actually then come up with an equation of state, right? We simply can uh, perhaps come up here uh, to define here what uh, the compression factor is for uh, a real case, okay? And we can say, well, uh, we can t uh, try to solve that equation for the pressure. Okay, so if we solve that expression for pressure, that is going to be equal to RT over the molar volume multiplied by C 
which is a compression factor, but now we can input here our expression for uh, the virial, uh, the virial ex expansion of that compression factor, right? So what we can have here is one plus uh, b prime p plus c prime p squared, and here you can add as many terms as you wish. Okay. All right. All right. So. Um, Good. So the, uh, uh, this is kind of uh, one of, uh, this would be your ideal, uh, uh, not, not your ideal gas, your real gas, your real equation of state, and this in principle should cover all cases, right? Notice that what you have right here in this expression is simply a way to fit that graph, right? So these are experiments. That's experimental data. And notice that what you have here is really an infinite order polynomial uh, uh, on the variable that you're representing here on the graph. Okay, so in principle, you can actually fit there with whatever you want, right? So, so this should always work. The question is, well, how many terms do you have to include? And do those terms have any physical significance? Do they mean anything at all? Okay, so we're going to uh, work towards uh, try, uh, to trying to do that. Now, uh, occasionally, we actually express this uh, uh, virial expansion, this virial equation of state, not as a function of the pressure, but as a function of the inverse of the molar volume. Okay, notice that pressure and molar volume are inversely related, right? So here we have chosen to plot this uh, compression factor as a function of pressure, but we could also have chosen uh, uh, to plot this as a function of the inverse of the molar volume, right? Because they are inversely uh, proportional, and the graph has exactly the same shape. Okay, so how would this change our equation of state? Well, it wouldn't change it great greatly, because the idea here is that every time that you have uh, P, you would just uh, replace it by molar volume, and this constant would change, okay, so that would no longer be B prime, but we could simply call it B, and then you will have uh, something like this, Vm squared, and here you will have inverse of Vm cubed, and this D prime disappears. So your equation of state, if you, defy, if you decide to expand uh, this equation in terms of the inverse of the molar volume as opposed to the pressure, will be very similar then, right? So uh, that will be just V over the molar volume, then C over the molar mo volume squared, and so forth. Okay? All right. Okay, so these are two versions of a virial equation of state that again allows it to ca uh, capture uh, the experiment faithfully. Okay, so um, now uh, uh, we're actually going to stop this video here because this is simply an introduction to the virial equation of state. And again, the, uh, the summary here is that uh, doing an expansion on the variable that breaks down uh, the ideal gas model, you can actually fit any experiment that you want. So you can envision this uh, virial equation of state as a brute force technique to capture reality. Okay, uh, but the interesting aspect of all this is whether these uh, constants that you get in the expansion in the equation of state, whether they mean something, and, and if they mean something, uh, can that uh, let us understand a little bit better what's going on inside that gas, right? So that meaning of uh, those constants and the relationship to a concept that is called the boil temperature is going to be something that we will see in the next video.